Hey there Keller Williams, this is Bryston from KWU, and today we'll be learning how to use the Print and Social Design Editor. So first, let's get logged in to agent.kw.com with your KW login credentials. After you're logged in, click the Designs icon on the left sidebar. From here, go ahead and click the blue Create Content button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Choose either social or print as your design type and click next. From here, you will use the filters on the left to select the type of template you want to use. Once you have identified the template you want to use, you can go ahead and hover over it, then click the use button. Now that we have reached our design editor, let's go ahead and review some things. Now that we've reached the print and social design editor, let's go ahead and review a few things. Up here in the top left hand corner, you'll find the file button. And as you see, there are a few options here. Save, show grid, manage bleed, and also you can check the print quality as well. If you click the clock icon, you'll be able to see the previous versions of this design that you have. And you can also revert back to those previous versions if you'd like. And these two buttons are to either undo or redo any changes or updates that you make to a current design. Over here in the center of the editor, you'll find a few tools that you can use to edit your design. You can draw some shapes or just place some shapes. You can also edit the opacity or the color. You can also add different types of frames or placeholders for images. You can also add text boxes up here as well. And over here on the left side of the page, you'll find five different panels that you can use to fully customize your design. Here in the images panel is where you can add images to a design from either your personal asset library or from a library of stock images provided by KW. Or you can also import images from your Facebook, Instagram, Google Drive, or Dropbox accounts, as well as uploading images directly from your computer. To add an image, you'll first need to identify the image you want to add. And once you have found that image, you can go ahead and hover over it and click the plus icon. And when you hover over it, you'll notice it'll say use image. Go ahead and click it and the image will be added to the design. After the image has been added, you'll notice that there are a few options for you to edit the photo with. You can reposition the image like so. You can also apply a filter to the image by using either a preset filter up here, or you can adjust the photo settings in a more detailed manner over here. You can also adjust the opacity by clicking this icon up here. And this icon up here, if you hover over it, will make the entire image the background of the design. Some other options you'll notice on the right. If you click transform, you can either rotate or flip the image. If you click arrange, you can change the layout order of the image or the alignment of the image. And also you can adjust the margin here as well. If you click duplicate, it would make a exact copy of the image that you've selected. And if you needed to remove an image, you can click this icon up here. Now, after you remove an image, you'll notice that the placeholder for the image has remained on the design. Be sure to remove the placeholder as well. And lastly, this lock icon will lock the image that you've selected and will prevent it from being moved or edited in any way. In the text panel, which you can access by clicking this icon up here, is where you can add text boxes from either your personal asset library, stock library. You also have the option to add fully editable banners and also plain text boxes as well. To add a text box, hover over the style that you'd like to add, click it. Then you can click inside the text box 
to edit the information. And up here is where you can actually edit the style of the text, the size of the text. You can change it to typewriter to get a better look at the text that you're typing. And you can also adjust, you know, certain things like the boldness, if it's underlined or not, letter case, the color, and also the opacity. And let's not forget, you also have some formatting options up here as well. Once your text has been added, you can drag and drop the text box to the desired position you want and also resize it like so. And if you decide that you want to delete it, make sure that you have the text box selected, then click this remove icon up here. Some other options I also wanna go over. You can also click this transform option up here to rotate it. You can also click this arrange option up here to adjust the arrangement of the text box. And you can also duplicate a text box as well. Moving on to the icons panel, you have the option to either add icons from the company library, stock library, or import your own icons from your computer. To add an icon, identify the icon you want to add, then go ahead and click it. If you decide that you want to replace the icon, hover over the icon you want to replace it with and click the replace icon. Up here, you can adjust the opacity. And on the right side, you have the same tools that we previously reviewed that you can use to edit the icon with. Next, we'll go over the logos panel. And very similar to the previous panel that we have reviewed, you can add logos from either your personal asset library or from the company library. You have various types of logos that you can use. And if you wanted to add a logo, first identify the logo, then click on it. And you can adjust like so. With the same edit tools that we reviewed previously. And if you wanted to replace the logo, find a logo that you want to replace it with. And click the replace icon. Now the last panel we'll be discussing is the KWLS panel. This panel is pretty different from the previous panels that we discussed given the fact that you can actually add images and listing information from your own KWLS listings, as well as pull neighborhood snapshot data right into the design. If you wanted to add listing information or listing images, you'll first need to search for the listing, which can be done by either the listing address, MLS number, KWLS ID, or you can also search by the listing agent or co-listing agent. So we'll go ahead and pull up a listing real quick. Once you've identified your listing, you can click select and you can add photos from here. And you can also add listing information here as well. If you wanted to add some neighborhood snapshot data, what you'll first need to do is identify the neighborhood you want to add information about. And you can search for the neighborhood by either searching for the neighborhood name or by the postal code. So we'll go ahead and identify our neighborhood real quick. Once you've identified your neighborhood, go ahead and click it. And you can add images with up-to-date market data right to the design. Now keep in mind, you're going to be using real-time market data with a static image. This means that the data will remain the same once the image has been pulled in. So if you need to update it, you're going to have to come back in here to make that change. And just like the previous panels that we have reviewed, you'll have some edit options up here as well, and also on your far right hand side. Once you've completely finished customizing your design, you can rename it up here, and also download it via JPEG, PNG, or PDF. For social designs, we recommend downloading them as either a JPEG or a PNG. And for print designs, you'll want to download it as a PDF. You can also share your design 
through social media or by copying and pasting the image link. And you can also share the project as well. And once you're finished, click done. For more resources, click the question mark in the top right hand corner of your screen. Click Keller Williams University and use the search. Thank you. Why stop now? Click one of these videos to learn more.